Have you ever patted yourself on the back after making a decision to not buy something? Well, I am feeling pretty good right now about not buying MW3. I've heard a mixture of both good and bad things about the multiplayer, but the campaign appears to be atrocious, and most, if not everybody, agrees on that. I've watched gameplay and a lot of reviews, and I've watched some of my favorite content creators play the game, and nobody seems to like it. Hell, even IGN rated the campaign a 4 out of 10, and in my opinion, they are usually the ones to be way too nice and lenient when it comes to rating games. This campaign sucks. It's horrible. It's a rushed, half-assed experience. Everyone wondered if MW3 would be worth it since the game appeared to be rushed and lacked original content. Many have labeled MW3's campaign as the worst ever in the series. This franchise has been around for two decades. Two decades worth of games and stories, and this one is the worst? With all the ideas, technology, and features that we have today, there's absolutely no excuse for this. In the last Call of Duty video I made, I asked a question. Will MW3 be worth it? Well, we got our answer rather quickly when the campaign released first. The answer is nope. I don't really get how you could botch the story in this game. The story in the last two games, in my opinion, were pretty good. The only complaint I really ever had came in last year's game when they started doing that open world scavenge for resource missions and they just were really annoying to play through, especially that stupid boss battle near the end of the game when you're fighting a tank along with 500 soldiers rushing your position and again, you have to find you know ammunition and stuff to fight the tank and also keep up with killing the soldiers. It's just over the top chaos that isn't needed. But overall, I thought the characters and the storytelling was solid. It's no Black Ops story, but it's good enough to keep me playing and it did give me some interest originally to consider purchasing MW3. They are essentially retelling the original Modern Warfare story, so this should be a cakewalk for them. You have the foundation already there, you have the characters and the original story and ideas that were loved by so many people. OG fans like me have jumped back in the COD literally for this story and these characters. I don't think this story is as good as the originals, but I do appreciate the attempt of telling the same story in some different ways. But sadly, the third game in this story just falls flat. Typically, Call of Duty campaigns last, you know, around maybe 7 to 10 hours. It's usually just enough content to get you by for that year's game. Well, this year's campaign experience lasts 3 to 5 hours. Some say maybe 5 to 8. Yikes, why so short? Well, the answer is quite simple. It's thanks to the open combat missions. There's a total of 14 missions in the campaign, and there's a combination of both linear missions, the traditional ones, and these open combat missions. What are open combat missions? Well, campaign creative director David Swensom claimed that it is a new innovation that empowers player decisions like never before. It's supposed to be an evolution for Call of Duty campaigns. I'm not sure that allowing players to run around a big map and complete objectives is innovative. These missions have no soul, there's no energy, there's no emotion. It's a literal DMZ for campaign mode. You have the freedom to take whatever route you want, and you can strategize on how you want to complete missions. You could go in guns blazing or you could sneak around, but it just feels like an empty experience as it's literally just you running around by yourself doing all this. Sure, you might talk or hear other characters talk, you could also use killstreaks to blow up your enemies and, and do different things, but to me that's just not really a fun, engaging experience. Call of Duty campaigns are known for epic missions and at least a few amazing sequences scattered across the story throughout the games. You know, I can rattle off a bunch and I'll just, you know, but for the sake of this video, I'll just rattle off a couple cool missions and sequences from the original Modern Warfare trilogy. You know, in Call of Duty 4, the original Modern Warfare game, the first one, you had the all gillied up epic sniper mission, you know, sneaking around Chernobyl. Also in COD 4, you had the playthrough and it was a, you know, a quick little sequence, but a memorable one where you play as an American soldier who is in a town that gets hit by a nuclear bomb. You know, Modern Warfare 2, you know, specifically looking at just a sequence here, you know, that one snow mission early in the game where you're on the snowmobiles and you're, you know, basically flying down the mountain trying to escape and you're getting attacked by en enemies and whatnot. Just a memorable, crazy, chaotic moment that was fun and enjoyable to play through. And then you had in the original Modern Warfare 2 and 3, those American missions where you're literally on U.S. soil defending the country against the Russian invasion and the most important defense ever of Burger Town. Also, Modern Warfare 2 had the most controversial mission in franchise history, the No Russian Mission, where you literally are playing as a terrorist. 
I am not surprised that we got a lesser version of No Russian in this game because, you know, with the way the world is in real life, you know, with mass shootings and terrorist activity, I, you know, all the stuff that's going on, it's probably best not to go an even darker route than in the original idea. Personally, I'm not really against it because I understand why they did something like that for shock value in the story. And you're also telling the truth. Like, this is stuff that happens. And, you know, some people will claim that you're promoting and glorifying these kinds of horrific events, even though I don't think it is. I think it's just legitimate storytelling. And, you know, in a way, it's good not to, you know, pretend like these things don't happen. And that's a total rant for another video. But, like, I don't think, you know, a lesser no Russian mission is what makes or breaks this campaign, though. But getting back to the actual action and emotions in the story, it's not there because it looks like and feels like you are playing DMZ, running around looking for loot in a campaign mission in Call of Duty. Come on, that's so lame. Let's break down the mission list. There's 14 total missions. Eight are linear missions, including this year's version of No Russian. The other six are the open combat missions. Why do those missions take up almost half the campaign? Again, probably because this was rushed. I don't usually complain about pacing in a Call of Duty game, but this year, I actually agree with people that are complaining about it. There's only two open combat missions within the first six missions in the game, so I think that's okay, that's an okay start. But when you get in the second half of the game, all of a sudden you get four. From mission seven to mission 12, you get four combat missions. You also get two of them in a row, specifically missions nine and 10. Here's the point. There's no reason to have this many combat missions when it's all the same thing. You have to run around solo, grabbing loot and equipment and completing objectives. And again, doing it all on your own like you're Rambo. How do you stay interested in this story when the linear missions which feature the cool stuff and the good sequences are just lightly sprinkled in across the 14 missions? Why is the content COD is known for being divided up into little pieces and hardly existing in this game? Why not design these open combat missions around actual battles? Like, you are going in with multiple, you know, platoons or regiments of soldiers and you're trying to take over a base or take over a town or maybe you're defending something. Captain Price, Soap, Ghost, and Gaz should always be together. This is your squad. This is your gang. There should always be dialogue heard between them, you know, in calm moments or in intense, hectic situations during a battle. The story's major plot points also feature a lot of lame moments. They try real hard to make Soap's death shocking and intense. It's really not. Maybe someone else should have been killed for a better shock and awe value because it's predictable. You knew Soap's death was coming. The story does not have to match up scene by scene when compared to the originals. And back in the day when General Shepard killed Ghost and Roach and betrayed Task Force 141, that was super shocking and sad. And then when you kill Shepard with a throwing knife, that was epic too. Again, this is stuff we're talking about, you know, 10, 15 plus years later. That's the stuff that people will remember and will go back and replay those missions for. And then in this game, we watch Shepard get killed in a cutscene at the end. It's just so disappointing that they were so lazy when making this game. The story is just so underwhelming, whether it's the actual story itself or the gameplay. Like, to me, and again, I know I was just watching, but like, I just did not have fun even watching streams of this game and content. Heck, even just watching the reviews, like, you know, you're watching the gameplay and you're like, okay, I could just like, you know, do the dishes and listen to this review in the background because there's no awesome content there. I wasn't entertained with anything. And also, where's the co-op experience? Instead of a random boring set of co-op missions like they've done in the last couple of games, why don't you let four players team up and play this campaign? That would make the experience a whole lot better, especially for the open combat missions. You could strategize with your friends. Maybe one person is providing sniper cover. Maybe another is handling the objectives, you know, planting bombs, disarming bombs, you know, whatever it is. You know, another is driving around in a vehicle providing support. And also maybe the fourth one is having a good time with the kill streaks, you know, taking out enemy and protecting his other three squad mates. If Sledgehammer doesn't want to provide you with fun content, then allow players to make their own fun. It's blatantly obvious that this game was either rushed or was originally planned to be DLC for Modern Warfare 2 back when Activision originally said that they would not release a new game in 2023. A Bloomberg article came out recently talking about what supposedly happened behind the scenes. The article goes on to explain that the game was originally pitched to Sledgehammer as an expansion to Modern Warfare 2. The story originally was focused on missions based in Mexico instead of what was actually created. Bloomberg sources claimed that Activision decided to reboot the project into a complete game. 
Then eventually a spokesperson from Activision came out and has since denied these claims. Sledgehammer Games studio head Aaron Hallon told Bloomberg in an interview that the developers who thought MW3 was a DLC were simply just confused because, as he claimed, it is a new type of sequel. Yeah, it's a new kind of sequel where you get missions that are void of content and emotion and story. Half the missions are just open world sandbox maps that you walk around in and just do what you please. And just as long as you finish, you know, whatever the objectives are for that mission. It's really nothing. I just really can't get over how lame this campaign is. You have all the pieces to the puzzle. Just put it together. Like, how could Black Ops 2 have better side missions that were similar to these open combat missions where they were just side activities that actually, depending if you won or lost those battles, affected the outcome of the overall story? And that was 11 years ago. Why can't the developers design bigger battles with a lot more going on? We have the technology for that stuff today. The stealth spec up stuff is cool, but why can't we rush into a big town with an army and, and not everything be, you know, have your combination of Task Force 141 missions and then the opportunity to run in with, you know, Marines or something and you're taking part in big battles. The original Modern Warfare trilogy featured a lot of that when it came to the American missions. And maybe we shouldn't be targeting the developers here because... You know, there's no need to pump out new games every year. I'll never understand corporate's need to rush out these games. Call of Duty is in a league of its own. Nobody is close to knocking the crown off their head. I was actually excited when they first announced this game and everything that would be in it because it literally features everything. Everything COD has to offer is in this game. Campaign, multiplayer, zombies, Warzone, and DMZ. I've heard mixed reviews on the rest of the game too. And I'm not surprised. The big feature for this game outside of the game modes is the maps. It would appear the developers only had time to make maps. We will eventually get a new map for Warzone and DMZ. We got open world maps for the campaign. And for core multiplayer, we got all the maps from OG Modern Warfare 2. Again, I don't want to go in too hard on the developers because Activision originally said that they would take the year off to develop the next game. This campaign definitely looks and feels like an expansion for Modern Warfare 2's story. And that would have been cool if they just did that because, well, that's still something new. We've never gotten that kind of DLC content before. There's just no need for them to rush out an unfinished product like this. It's not a good look for both Activision and Xbox as Microsoft officially owns them now too. You know, Starfield was disappointing from Bethesda. That was something I think Xbox and Microsoft were really hoping was going to be good. The first Call of Duty under their ownership, you know, even though I know this process, this transaction just happened, this is controversial. I mean, if you're Microsoft, you're probably like throwing your hands up and, you know, rolling your eyes like, geez, like, can anything go right? You know, these big time games and it's just this stuff's not hitting. And again, it's disappointing as a consumer, too. And I'll definitely be curious to see how the rest of the content pans out for this game in the multiplayer realm. So what are your thoughts on MW3? Talk to me about the campaign and the multiplayer if you've been playing it. Did I make the right call by not buying this game? I'm leaning towards yes, but let me know. Thanks for watching. Go check out some other content on the channel and subscribe if you haven't. If you are subscribed, thank you so much for the sub. I appreciate your support and thanks for rolling in again. And uh, also, whether you're about to sub or if you are a sub, make sure the notifications are on for the channel because the notification system never seems to work right on this platform. And it's funny how I have 500 subs and sometimes my views don't indicate that. So it's a little frustrating at times, but hey, that's a complaint for another day. Just at the end of the day, I appreciate whatever support you guys can give as I just keep on rolling with this channel. I'm definitely enjoying making content and I really do enjoy engaging with the community. So hop on board if you're not. And if you are, thank you. I appreciate it. Anyways, you can also find my content on podcasting platforms. Just Google analyze this podcast. You can also find me on X and TikTok. X at analyze this underscore YT and TikTok at analyze this 54 underscore YT. Thanks again and take care.